And we are back with the RV crash course. We are going to do an inverter upgrade guide. Some people want to put one in there. Some people are not sure if it's for them. And here's just a rough idea of what you need to think about when you're looking at upgrading into an inverter. You need to determine your load. How much are you going to put on that inverter circuit? If you're just going to run a few outlets in the TV, a 1,000 to 1,500 watt inverter is more than enough. If you want to run the outlets in the microwave, you're going to start looking at a 2,000 watt inverter is kind of the baseline. If you want the RV AC unit and everything else, you're going to be wanting to get a 3,000 watt inverter. So bigger is always better because sometimes you're just going to want to put more on it anyway. So if you think you can do with one, maybe you just want to upgrade to the next size. Recommended brands. I recommend Xantrex, Magnum Dimensions, or Victron. There are other manufacturers out there, but these are the ones that tried and true seem to work year after year after year. If you are going to run the AC on the inverter, some things you need to consider when you do that. You're going to want to install a soft start on the AC unit because when AC unit kicks on, it hits the inverter pretty darn hard with uh, with the heavy loads that it comes on it. So to make sure the inverter lasts longer and you don't possibly trip the systems and things like that, you're going to want to install a soft start on the AC unit. They're cheap. They're easy to do. You can do it yourself or have somebody do it. I'll leave a link in the description on the one I recommend to work with. And you can go that route. Size matters. This is where you need to be careful of what size inverter you put in your RV. Technically, an AC unit runs around 1500 to 1800 watts. So yes, a 2000 watt inverter could run the air conditioner, but you're not gonna have much room for much else. You're not gonna be running the microwave on it. You're not gonna be doing a whole lot of anything else. You can basically just keep your phone chargers on and that's about it. So a 3000 watt unit is what is recommended. You gotta also note, runtime is limited due to your battery capacities. If you just have one battery, it's gonna be very short. If you have two, three, four, five, and six, obviously runtime goes up for the more capacity and the more charged they are. Installation parameters. You're gonna to to have that inverter unit mounted five feet or less from the batteries. Because when you start getting your battery cable size, the more load you have, the further away it is, the bigger cable needs to be. So five feet is kind of the rule of thumb where you don't want to go any further than that because DC power slows down pretty quick. So just to be on the safe side, five feet or less. Most RBs, that can be done very easily. You got to have it in an area with ventilation because you don't want it to get wet but you need to have airflow because it does get a little warm when you start really running the loads for a long period of time. You're going to want to run a 4 ot battery cable for any kind of inverter because that is what is recommended. So 4 ot battery cable, 5 feet or less from the batteries. So that is a cost. Usually it's around $10 a foot in battery cable, but that's what you need to be able to run that. 10 gauge AC wires minimum. Because the further away your AC uh, inverter is from your breakers or how far that power needs to run, it needs to possibly go up in size. So 10 gauge is the minimum code spec for AC wires. So just something to be aware of. Not as expensive as battery cable, but you're going to want to be running that to and from. So that is all part of the process. And I have done this myself. I've done it on a lot of RVs, so it's actually a pretty simple system. And I'll draw you up a picture of what I did and how it works for me. So here we have a very poorly drawn but effective drawing of an RV bumper pole camper. This is my specific floor plan. I have a Jayco 264BH. So it's just a standard bunkhouse. These are the bunks. Front bed RV. So a lot of floor plans are going to be similar. Your forest rivers, things like that, are going to be very similar laid out to this one. It's a very standard floor plan. There is no slide outs on it at all. So this is your very bare bones, very simple, very basic RV. And as you can tell, it is bumper pull, not a fifth wheel. 
So over here we have your AC breakers underneath the fridge, right there, that's where they are located. This is our normal power cord that goes out that you plug in, the bed is up here, batteries are up there. So what I did is I have two Group 31 batteries up at the front. I mounted my inverter underneath the bed because that area has enough airflow, so that will allow the inverter to cool. It is inside, so it won't get moisture. So cables ran through the floor and to the battery, and that's where they tied in the battery. My AC power cables went down through the floor and back over here and tied into the breaker box system. Now, here's the tricky part, because I inverted my entire camper, so my AC unit and everything else like that is on the inverted circuit. So if I'm inverting, we have to be aware if we're using a certain hair dryer in the bathroom area because a uh, hair dryer is too much for the inverter. But if I'm plugged into shore power, it is more than enough. I don't have to worry about it. So I put a 30 amp breaker on the power coming in. So it goes power there, goes to the inverter, and then goes back to my breaker box. So technically, my inverter is before the breaker box system. So... Ideally, you think, oh, the power code goes in, goes right to that breaker box, and goes to all your outlets, things like that. What I did is I went from the power cord, put a 30 amp breaker for input coming in to make sure that system is separate. Goes to the inverter, then back to the breaker box. So that's where everything on my RV is inverted, air conditioner, everything included. So that's where I have to be aware of how much power I'm using because I went with a Xantrax 2000 watt inverter. So I went with the Xantrax because I know they work, they're good, they're reliable, they don't take up a lot of space. And they have a control module monitor, that's a simple on off button. So if my wife needs to run it, she can just press the button on and it works or turn it off. And I can monitor my output and input on that controller. I just mounted the controller simply on the wall right by the bed. so. Easily at any time of day, if I wake up in the middle of the night, power's out, I can simply turn the inverter on and have the power and everything back on and running and just know I gotta be aware of what is going on. So it's a very simple unit. It's a great upgrade. And that's the unit I went with. So I used four out battery cable because I am right at five feet. So that's the cable I went with. I used number six AC wires just simply because that core length plus that and that, you know, over a 28-foot camper, that is a long way. So I went with number six to make sure I was above and beyond the requirement for this system. I used a 30-amp breaker for power in. I just mounted in a box right behind the AC breaker panel. So if you actually look at yours and your breaker panels below the fridge, you pop it out four screws. And it's kind of a big open cavity back there, so there's plenty of room to add it in there and then run wires through actually went through the floor right there to run the AC wires down underneath the frame up in the inverter and then same back so I have two runs of three wires each and because my inverter has a converter integrated into it so if it sees AC power coming in it starts automatically charging the batteries if AC power goes away it'll automatically kick over to run on the inverter and it'll send AC power out. I turn my converter off because my converter is tied in as part of the breaker box assembly. I do not need to have two places charging batteries at the same time. I don't want them to fight with each other. So I have the inverter doing the work because it can regulate and it has different charging sequences. So it maintains batteries better than a regular converter system. So mine I just had turned off. A key note with my RV is my water heater, which is mounted right back here, does not have an electric AC element to heat the water. So if I'm running on the inverter, I don't have to worry about that. So if your RV has an electric water heater element, you have to be aware of if that needs to be on at the breaker or off at the breaker when you're using the inverter or not. Because you don't want to run AC element with the inverter, you're just going to kill your batteries very quickly. So if you did, you can just flip the breaker off when you're inverting and just turn it back on when you're plugged into shore power. It's not a big deal. But just as a note, I didn't have one, so I didn't have to worry about that as part of my process. Been using this for a couple of years. It works great. I run the AC unit off the two AGM batteries. They don't last the longest, but I'm aware 
of what their capabilities are. So if we stop for dinner somewhere along the way on our trip, we can just turn the air conditioner on, sit in the camper with the kids. They can get their energy out in the camper. We can eat and then get on our way with our travels, turn the inverter back off, turn the air off, and keep moving. So it works out in a pinch. It's very convenient for us, things like that. If we want to stop at a roadside park, we can turn the air on and have a place to relax and while the kids play. So that is what I did for my camper that I use on a regular basis. Other campers can be different. If you have a motorhome, you have different places they can mount them, things like that. This is just personally what I did and how I went about solving this problem. So be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell for icon for notifications. Links are in the description of anything that you want to buy and see if, I, if you want to copy the exact same system I have. And this is how I did it.